Hi there, Steve here. I hope you can hear me above the din of some of the construction equipment that's going on here. I'm standing by the steps to the Arts Building at McGill University. Of course, I'm in Montreal for the polyglot, the long fest um, gathering of polyglots and people who are interested in languages here in Montreal. But I decided to visit McGill because 55 years ago, more or less around this time, say a month or so later, I enrolled at McGill University and I had to come up these steps to uh, decide which courses I was going to take. Uh, so that's 55 years ago. By the way, it's quite sunny, so I have the hat that I picked up in Ukraine. I love Ukraine because after all, yesterday, I believe, was the uh, 26th sort of independence, uh, the anniversary of uh, Ukrainian independence. So I salute uh, any Ukrainians. Slava Ukraini. Uh, my granddaughter is going to be 20 years old tomorrow. So that's another milestone. And I took the opportunity here to visit bookstores to see what they have in the way of language learning books. So the only bookstore that was nearby was one where they had material for sort of immigrant learners. And they had these grammar books and a series of them, very, and the, the, the books sort of ranged in price from $19 to $50. The lady explained that for an, a three month sort of semester, the average learner would spend 90 bucks just on textbooks. I have no idea what the cost of the class is. She said it's done in conjunction with a language lab. I don't even know why people use language labs. I have my language lab right now. I'm using it to uh, film this video. There's so much in the way of resources available. Why people bother with all this stuff, I don't know. I was looking for their main bookstore because I remember when I was in um, Stanford in Palo Alto, California, uh, the books there for uh, learning Italian and Russian were like $150, $200 a book. Uh, again, I don't know what the results are of those books, how well people do. Um, certainly our experience in Canada is, for example, with the immigrants that uh, what the immigrant does outside the classroom is much more important than what happens inside the classroom. And this is because our, our, the learning uh, of languages is like so much, so much of our learning we learn from experience. So people who have a lot of experience with the language, the brain is dealing with this language and finding ways to, to manage the language, creating new synapses in the brain. The brain changes all the time. Uh, whether formal instruction has the same effect on our brain, Personally, I doubt. Uh, tomorrow uh, and over the next three days, I want to get into discussion with some of the other polyglots over over this. You know, I was doing some reading about the brain, and it, of course, the brain changes all the time as we learn. It's not only the brain that changes; science changes. So, scientists used to believe that our brains were fixed uh, at birth, almost, uh, and then uh, they discovered that there is this uh, neuroplasticity that the brain keeps changing but that it firms up, let's say, in childhood. And then they describe this, this uh, process of pruning unnecessary synapses and focusing on those synapses that matter. And so that would suggest that once uh, sort of unnecessary synapses have been pruned, then unless you have been using synapses that relate, say, to language learning or being exposed to other languages, then you might be less good at learning languages. Uh, but then they discovered that, in fact, the pruning of synapses happens again at adolescence, at puberty, and now they discover that it continues up to uh, your 20s. So, but obviously the earlier you can get the brain used to dealing with other languages, the better. But is this achieved, this developing the ability to deal with other languages, is it achieved more through exposure to the language, enjoyable exposure to the language, or through some deliberate instruction where you have tests and you fail in the tests and you develop a, a certain fear of getting things wrong and fear of making mistakes and so forth. I suspect that a proper program of simply exposing people to things that matter to them in the language, Krashen's meaningful content, uh, meaningful content, is going to be more effective in training the brain and developing those neural connections that will enable people to, to be good language learners. Anyway, those are some of the uh, themes that, uh, that I want to get into. Uh, I believe, I mean, I'm certainly learning languages at the age of 70. My brain is still learning. Yesterday, I, or was it, yeah, it was yesterday, I, I looked up, you know, I subscribed, or took about a three day pass on the sort of rent a bike system here in Montreal, got the instructions on how to use it on the internet, went to the station to pick up my bike, and I couldn't 
figure out how to get a bike. Ended up having to phone them three times. Finally, I gave up. I refunded, had my uh, three-day pass refunded, bought a one-day pass. That worked. Then I went to my destination, but I went by the wrong route. But I'm learning. So now I know how to negotiate a bike from the station. I know the best route to go there again. And so we're always experiencing things. And as we experience these things, we learn. Um, sometimes deliberate instruction, uh, if we haven't already experienced these things, the deliberate instruction explanation manual is very hard for the brain to deal with. So pleasurable exposure. Again, I'm beating on a, on a <laughs> very, uh, you know, same old drum again. But Stephen Krauschen is going to be here, who, to my mind, is the leading explainer of how we learn, and some truly outstanding polyglots, and I'm going to be asking them a lot of questions. How many of them were exposed to a lot of languages as children? How many of them grew up in a monolingual family and then subsequently became polyglots? When, how, and so forth. So I'm looking forward to learning a lot, and uh, that's all for today. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.